Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic graph theory. Today, a new topic, uh, random graphs, kind of the last one we'd like to cover here. And then we kind of wrap up a little bit with a few fun applications of uh, graphs. So graphs, of, of course, have like a zillion trillion applications. But anyway, I would like to talk about uh, random graphs today um, and more like in an overview kind of point. Um, and later I will give you some more details what these actually are. So usually with random things, that's very easy kind of to explain uh, what it is morally and then to make it precise, it's usually a bit painful, but it's not so bad in this case. Uh, morally, it's just we pack all graphs in a huge pack and we draw out one of them randomly, right? They're all in the back. We just uh, scrubble it all the way up just and then, then grab in and, and pull out a graph. And the kind of the question is, can we say anything about it? And that's not so obvious at all, but it's kind of by now a well-known, let us let me say well-known, kind of well-known experimental fact in mathematics, whatever that is, um, that kind of random patterns or so, so random definitions, no, not a random definition, definitions of random things um, are maybe not so random at all. And you can actually say quite a lot. So roughly what I have in mind is if, if we know something about random graphs, then we know something about uh, probabilities, like um, how big is the chance that a graph has property A, how big is the chance that the graph has property B, something like that. And to get you started, let's do something easier, a random example, eh? a random graph, a random example. So let me start with something even easier if you want. Um, if you draw out of out of the back of all real numbers, or just randomly a number, then what can you say about that number, right? So um, maybe not so much, but you can say, for example, that it's almost impossible to draw a rational number. So almost uh, unlikely, like 0% chance in a very precise way, you will get a rational number. So you can actually say something about it. So almost all of the time, you get an irrational number. And for more discrete patterns, you usually get a bit better statements, uh, graphs or prime numbers here as my, in my example. So for example, for prime numbers. So prime numbers are quite random objects. So that's this fun game of just putting them as uh, so all numbers here in a spiral, just one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, and so on, and so on, and just mark the, uh, the primes. And what do you get if you zoom out is essentially noise. Huh? And noise is, if you want, the definition of being random. So they essentially appear randomly, and it really looks like noise if you zoom out, but there are a lot of patterns you can actually observe. For example, the famous prime number theorem would tell you uh, something about the probability of a number of being prime, which is roughly one over log n, right? So um, if you draw out the number of size n, then the probability of it being prime is roughly this number here. Um, it's quite impressive because well, primes itself, they are very random. So saying something precise about when you draw out uh, a random number uh, out of this, well, of all those integers here, whether it's prime or not, is essentially impossible if you want. Um, but saying something in more like with probability X, we can say something that's actually not so bad. And that's exactly what I would like to do in, in graph theory. So we will replace prime numbers by graphs and play the same game. We put them in the back, we draw them out randomly, and maybe we can actually say something about them. So let me get started with what a random graph is. So here's a random graph. Um, yeah, this was produced randomly by a machine, ignoring here the fact that machines, uh, so a computer really can't produce random things. But anyway, let's, let's ignore that. Um, essentially, it should be that you put in some vertices somewhere vertex, 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 vertex. And then you just flip a coin for each pair of vertices, whether you put an edge or not, or a biased coin, or you, you have very varying pro probability or something. But anyway, you kind of choose edges randomly and whatever, whatever you get. So here is another choice, another choice, maybe we choose this one or whatever. Whatever we get is called a random graph. Um, and it's it's essentially like noise. Yeah? So I really like this because here, here's essentially noise. Yeah? This one looks like noise. This one here looks like noise. That's very, very similar actually. But as we have learned from prime numbers or from the prime number example and from many, many other examples out there. So noise might still have some patterns and we might still be able to say something about those random graphs, right? So random graph just choose edges randomly and try to say something about it. 
Usually they have a fixed number of vertices or whatever it is here, and then you choose edges randomly with certain probability. For example, here, uh, 20 vertices, and with 10% probability, you will put an edge. And the graph is pretty sparse in some sense, because it, only with 10% probability, uh, you would put an edge. And this is the one you get, or you can get many, of course. This is one the one one would get, for example, from asking a machine to do it or just do it yourself, having a 10-sided dice and just rolling the dice all the time. And usually what we really do is to study them for large, 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 large numbers of vertices. And then you can actually see patterns arise. Namely, almost all random graphs eventually will be connected. And it doesn't really depend on the probability. Of course, if you have higher probability, then this will happen way, uh, way, way earlier. Um, but if you just think about it, so for each pair of vertices, here's another one. And here, let's say we don't put the edge. And here, we don't put the edge. Here, we put the edge. And here, we put the edge. This is a horrible picture because you can't really distinguish where you, where you not put the edge. So let me take out the not edges. Uh, so here's a not edge. Let me put in the vertices again. So and let me make them whatever blue. So the blue ones are the not edges. So uh, we have chosen whatever five out of seven here. And as you can see, because there are so many other vertices, it kind of gets very likely eventually that the graph is connected. And this is an example of something you can prove. So eventually all random graphs are connected. In other words, essentially all graphs are connected because a random graph is kind of an average graph if you want. That's quite a cool. So very, very easy, obviously, uh, quite easy property whether they're connected or not. But it's kind of also easy to see that this would happen because you just choose edges randomly and eventually you have so many vertices. So your favorite vertex will be connected to something. And the same for the other vertex, it will be connected to something and so on and so on. So it seems to be very likely that all random graphs are connected and almost all, of course. And that's exactly the case. So um, and this, I'm going coming back to that in a second. Um, so very, very important. Almost all and almost no, never is not the same as no and all, right? So almost all just means essentially probability goes to uh, one and almost no means probability goes to zero. So here's another statement of the same type, which is way more delicate to prove than the connectivity. And I will try to explain how to do that actually. So almost all graphs are Hamiltonian and almost no graph is Eulerian. Um, I will zoom into this picture in a second, but essentially I've listed them. And that's kind of, kind of strange because it, if you do very small graphs, it looks like everything is Eulerian and nothing is Hamiltonian, but uh, this is just the law of small numbers. Yeah, so um, these are not the same. They have ob obviously intersections. There are graphs that are both. There are graphs that are neither. But a kind of randomly drawn graph from our back will be with probability one Hamiltonian, and with probability zero, it will be uh, Eulerian. So here is I listed them up to sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Uh, the the number of them compared to the number of all graphs. So this one is maybe around eighty percent already. So eighty percent of all graphs on 18 vertices are Hamiltonian. And this one is whatever is around 5%, I would get, I would guess 0.8%. I should actually write something sensible here. Um, so 80% is this here, and this is maybe more like 5%. And as you can see kind of from the graph, and it probably will continue and, and essentially it does. So the, the idea of the upcoming series is to kind of explain this extremely great kind of idea that a randomly generated object can tell you something about almost all graphs. Like, so there are properties which kind of stabilize. And if you really draw out uh, something randomly from your back, it's very likely that it will have this property or it's very unlikely that it will have this property or it will have this property with probability 50% or something, something like that. And that's what I would like to discuss. And it's, it's really a lot of fun. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.